I'm Rhonda Gahey, I'm the leader of Eastern Bartonshire Council. In 1995 I was asked to stand for the Labour Party locally, uh, really because I've been part of the Community Council and I've done quite a lot of uh, work campaigning to make the town centre better. The worry is I think all these years later I'm still under that, on that journey. Um, so I really started uh, standing for, as I say, for a councillor in '95, which was when Unitarian authorities became the norm in Scotland. Uh, I was elected in the shadow year, and then in, in uh, 1996, um, the council came into being, Eastern Bartonshire. Uh, over the years since then, I have been part of the administration, I've also been part of the opposition. So I have uh, had varied roles uh, during those many years, uh, but at the last council election uh, I became the leader of the council. So this is my second term as leader of the council. And during that time, at one point, I was the only female leader in Scotland, which I thought was quite a shocking statistic. Um, and so from then on, I've been trying to encourage as many women as possible to put themselves forward, to take responsibility uh, in various roles. And I, I like to promote women as much as possible. I also lead the COSLA Labour Group uh, and again, try to promote women through that. So I led a, a task group um, in COSLA which was looking at women uh, in politics and, as I say, trying to get equality through that. I actually managed to get the constitution changed for COSLA as well, uh, so that now we will have 50% representation of women, which I think is really important. I'm not saying those are the only groups that need representation. Obviously, that's not the case. But I think we have to start with the one that is the most prominent, and certainly I think it is gender balance is the, the one that we really need to focus on to start that journey. When I started as a councillor, I became the convener, which was contracts at that time. And that was very much working with the DLO and that was that was my convenership. Um, and I do remember at that point, I remember I was a very new councillor and I would walk into a room and I'd be the only woman in the place. I know things have changed a lot since that, uh, but it was very much male dominated. Um, and so the, the conversations used to stop as I walked into the room. They did get used to me over time. Uh, been, and then more females did join me, obviously, but at that point it, it was quite daunting, and especially as a new councillor, trying to learn your role, um, but also being the fact that you were the only woman. And I think over years uh, you did have to toughen up a bit and you had to make sure that your voices was heard as well because sometimes the male domination can be the thing that comes into the fore. Um, and of course, when I would have become leader, uh, there was very much the, the grey suits was very prominent. Uh, and I did try and work with colourful outfits so that I did stand out a wee bit, didn't just look the same as everybody else. I think the only problem that I did have sometimes was going along to events if I had male colleagues with me who were council officials. Because uh, whenever uh, the council leader was introduced, they would always turn to my male colleagues and shake their hand rather than myself. So there was this perception that it had to be a man, it couldn't possibly be a woman. So trying to overcome that has been part of my role as well. Uh, certainly within politics, we are seeing more women in prominent places. But we have to be, as, as women, we have to actually put ourselves forward for these positions as well, not just allow others to do it, because our voices and opinions are important. I think one of the main things is don't take it personally and I think that is sometimes a problem for women. I think sometimes they do feel that they, it's a personal vendetta against them and of course it's not, it's just sometimes it's, it's whatever you're standing and promoting at the time. Uh, so you have to do develop a, a bit of a thick skin um, and, and try and if you believe something is right you have to go for it. Uh, don't be put off. I think that's, uh, that can be quite difficult at times. And I think as well there can be a bit of patronising goes on and that sometimes can be uh, quite difficult for women to put up with. But uh, I think you just have to stick to your guns and as long as you are, you truly believe you're doing the right thing, go for it. Uh, there's so many uh, different reasons that I would have for having uh, women inspire me. Probably Barbara Castle if you go back years. And maybe some of your people will not know who that is but uh, I'm obviously a lot older. Uh, probably Helen Mirren, I always think when I look at Helen, she's of an age and yet she always looks so calm, so confident and so elegant and I just would love to be like her but I, I think that's just a wonderful aspiration I would have.
And I think uh, the more women we see coming, putting themselves forward and standing for positions, the better. I'm not saying we'll always succeed, but at least if we've got the women putting themselves up, because sometimes what's said is, ah, but is, are they good enough? Or will there be enough women put themselves forward? And I think that's up to us then to prove that we can do it and we should do it uh, because women's voices and opinions are really important.